go to the notebook folder okay wherever you have cloned your repository github image for sync notebook there's a couple of notebooks already provided for you let's start with the first one the python imaging library okay google similar library similar to the PIL library anybody knows about the Google equivalent to the Python imaging library Pilo yes Pilo is for installing the package but Pilo is PIL it's the same so if for you to install a Python imaging library you need to do this right Okay, you got that. So for those who can't get into TSSG, you can try TSSG2. Password is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8. 7, 8. Okay. So if you have already installed Python using Anaconda, you sh probably should, you probably already have um, the PIL. If not, if this fails, then you of course just do a pip install pillow. So for those who don't know about um, Jupyter Notebook, who's new to Jupyter Notebook? Okay, so Jupyter Notebook is an interactive um, programming interface for Python. It's it's interactive, it's GUI, it's easy to use, and it allow it's uh, each of these you just need to click on the IPYNB okay all the Python notebooks has the extension IPYNB IPython notebook it uses the IPython library to run the pretty little thing we see in front of us right so once you click on it it's a new session right so for you to run any of this cell each of these cell it could be a markdown language it could be a Python tree format so you can have a python tree format so you also have a bar a toolbar that you can use this will tell you whether this is this is markdown language this is in code right i'm just going to close this bar so that i have more space on the screen everybody can see the screen fine okay And for you to run any of these, you can click run or you can hit shift enter, they will run and go to the next cell. Every time you run a cell, basically this number change. The number tells you what order you have run the cell, right? So if I restart my kernel, so basically it's a new session. Let me close the toolbar. And you see number one, this means this is the first cell I've run. So this is the first cell, basically all the codes inside that cell I've run it. Okay? So everybody with me so far? Okay, the Python imaging library is the library that we tend to use for images uh, processing in Python. It comes as one of the core libraries that is provided uh, for you to run images. It has all the required, um, required tools that you need. So if you just need to look at image, okay, then you can see all the different types of image processing you can run just by using the image library inside the PIL library. So first, what we want to do, we want to first get an image. So run the next cell. Now you have your image. How you want to see your image? Just need to do this. And you get your image, yeah? This is how you open any image. 
simple as that. So if you want to save the image in a different format, straight away, this here we have two JPGs format library. Now we run this, we're getting all the files and we can convert it into JPG if we want. Okay, so for this, right, if let's say we have a PNG here, so let's change this to PNG instead. Now we should have the, these two JPG images converted into PNG. Okay. If you have any questions, just raise your hands. So just that's just a very simple conversion of images. Next, we want to create a thumbnail. What's a thumbnail? You understand what's a thumbnail? Basically, what you see inside your windows, it's called a thumbnail. It's a small little, uh, smaller, very small little thumbnail, basically a smaller sized image of your original image like this. To crop, you just need to use dot crop. You have your image. This is dot thumbnail. We just next do a box. Basically, your box basically shows an upper left corner, x, y of your upper left corner and your x, y of your lower right corner. And you get a box like that. Okay. As you can see, this is probably somewhere here to somewhere here. To transpose, you need to have your transpose. You need to add in your rotation you want to transpose it into. And this here, just paste it into the same box that we've cropped. Resize, we just need to dot resize. And voila, okay. Rotate similarly, just dot rotate, and that's it. You put in the rotation angle that you want, and you get a new image. So try it yourself. Okay, anybody have any problems? Got problems? Yeah, I do. I can't even import, and I already have PO. Okay, so let's see. Okay, the other one you need to check is whether you have. How did you um? Is, did you download Anaconda? Yeah, I did. This okay. is my Anaconda. This is your Anaconda. This is your Anaconda. So try Conda install. Mm. Conda install. Pillow. Yeah. Yes, first. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. Okay. You don't have the necessary permissions. Is this your own laptop? Yeah. Do you have admin? Uh -huh. Okay, run the command line in admin. Okay, conda install. Conda install. Okay. It, Okay, you need to go to your users that right there mm -hmm. and do a conda install okay, the same path CD, CD. yeah okay. Okay. i have a broken but i think for this one have you run it yeah uh, 
Yeah, that's good. Well, this one is, you should load the first one. This is the thumbnail. For this one, I don't know why. It... No, that's good. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's okay. What's okay. wrong with that? Okay, okay. That's, yeah, this of files is good. Okay, did you manage yourself? Mm, no. Uh, how many so? You need to find your conda. If you can run the anaconda um, oh. window command, sorry, anaconda command, anaconda prompt just now. You see that conda, anaconda prompt? Oh, yeah. Anybody got prompt? Any prompt? You okay? No. Yeah, that's a very dumb question. How do I make changes? You need to run from the first cell onwards. How do I run? Shift enter. Click on it. Click on it. You need to click on it first. Click on. Okay, so this is this is not uh, Python uh, this is not Jupyter Notebook. This is GitHub. Jupyter Notebook? Yep, you need to have you launched that? Okay, launch that. Yeah. Okay, go to your Project repository. Project repository. Have you downloaded the? Uh, where did you download into? I've downloaded into this uh, GitHub desktop. Mm. Okay, so go to your documents. From here. Documents. GitHub. Image processing. Book. Okay. okay. Now click on that and shift enter. This one. Okay, you're good. Okay, so have you run your Jupyter Notebook? No, I, I don't have. You need, you need Jupyter Notebook. Oh. So is there a reason you are not installing? I, I use Python in this terminal. Do you need Jupyter Notebook? Have you installed Jupyter Notebook? No, not yet. Mm. Okay, yeah. So. Install children a book via Anaconda or however you want to. Are you a programmer? Newbie? Really Newbie. So I'll just recommend you to install Anaconda. Anaconda. Okay. You have all the links from the meetup. Okay. Install Anaconda. Okay. 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 Install Anaconda, but I try to launch the children notebook, but they come with the When you install, did you install everything? Ah uh, yes. On Python three or uh, the latest one, Python three. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you do you have administrator rights? Ah uh, yes. Okay. Okay. You might need to reinstall. Okay. Yeah, reinstall this. Um, there's something wrong with your installation. This is brand new. Uh, yes. Mm. Yeah. Either you can search. Sorry, not search. No. Search for the error code. Sorry. Is it okay? Yep, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, you have. Why do you have two? This is icon. <laughs> that, yeah, that's not that's not good. Quit first, restart everything. Okay, let's restart everything. Okay, restart my okay. You okay? No. I already installed it. But then, and then I restarted my environment with really, but I still this. And you launched this from, or oh, you didn't launch this from Anaconda. Did you launch this from? I launched from Jupyter. 
using Jupyter Notebook. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a different one. Oh. So if you launch from Jupyter Notebook, do this pip entry install pillow. Install pillow. Pip tree install pillow. Oh, you don't, not recognized. Okay, so search for your. You install Anaconda, right? Yep, search for Anaconda. Yes, that one, navigator. And launch Jupyter Notebook okay. from Anaconda okay. and try again. Yeah. Okay. So just now was just a simple exercise. Now let's look at Matplotlib. Okay. So for images, right? Um, when you're doing coding, pro image processing on images, it's actually a lot of mathematics involved. Right, all those algorithms you see when you use any um, any image processing applications, like give me one, any, like um, like Adobe, uh, Photoshop, right? All those they have a lot of mathematics at the back end, right? At the back that you don't see. So when we deal with images, it's actually a lot of mathematics. The libraries that we use to process all these images are the mathematics libraries. So matplotlib, numpy, and another one, if we have time, I'll introduce to you is the scipy, right? So let's see, let's try this. So matplotlib is great when you deal with mathematics and plotting of graphs. And when you're talking about images, if I said two weeks ago, we will need to deal with the, um, the individual numbers that represent every single pixel in your image, right? So again, let's import our image. To show an image using, uh, to plot the image on a graph, on a metropolitan graph, you just need to do I am show. And you have it on a graph. And basically, these pixels on your x-axis, sorry, yeah, your x-axis and your y-axis, 800 pixels, right? So let's say we, we plot some points, we plot x and we plot y, and voila, we have x and y, and this here we are just plotting a white line. Right. White line from X1, sorry, from, yeah, from X1 to Y1. And all these you can, you can Google for what all these notation stands for. This stands for a red star. So this stands for white. Blue, I think it's B. Black is K and so on and so forth. Okay, the other thing that we usually want to plot is the contours. How do we determine contours in an image, right? So we are talking about the difference on the brightness of the image. When we are plotting uh, the contours of the image, we are plotting about a uh, grayscale image. So from the, the difference in the lightness and the darkness of your neighboring pixels, that's where your contour lies. Okay, so simple way of plotting your contour. First, we need to first convert your image into uh, an array. So let's take a look. What do we have in here? Okay, so this array, every single element of your array represents an a grayscale value. So this means it has a grayscale value of 157, right? And from this array, we can now plot the contours. Now that we have the contours, we just need to use the contour. You have your figure, gray. All these are matplotlib. 
commands and you just need to plot your contours and by passing in your array, your two-dimensional array. And voila. Okay. So the difference in colors basically, darker it is, the bigger the difference. That's it. It's that simple between the pixel and its surrounding neighbors. So like this, it only has, uh, if you want to plot the average difference between this pixel and the neighborhood pixel, that's what you get. The other most important information about any picture is your histogram plot. So this here, we are only plotting the, the grayscale image of your histogram. You can always plot the red, uh, red green or yellow of your uh, image, red, green, or blue pixel of image, just convert it into RGB, plot the different channels, and you get a different plot, right? But here we are just getting the grayscale image and we are plotting it right here. And as you can see from the histogram, it means that we don't have uh, a lot of white, right? 255 means it's white color. So the white, whiter colors is lacking and it has more darker colors in the image. Okay. Now, get one of your own images, try to plot it. Okay. Okay. It's working. Okay, ready? Yeah. How come? Uh, I think <laughs> okay, the can. path is different. Good, Good. Okay. great stuff. You okay? Mm. Still freaking out. Yeah. Um. Okay. So you are opening your image from a different path. Okay. Right. So, but you're running from which directory? So, your Python library is run on the C drive or C drive, C -drive, C -drive also? Yeah, C -drive. And this here, wait a check. Where is your GitHub? Where's your GitHub? Oh. I don't think she used Git to install. She just oh, you download? Did. Yeah, download the You download the file directly, yeah, but you did not download the image. I did, I did. You did? You yeah. download the image to where? Also to, to C actually. Also to here, the same place actually. Where's this the image? This, this is the part here. Yeah. And the image is? For site. Skyline. Yeah, the Skyline. JPG, yeah. okay. Yeah. Let's have a look. So where is your? Just not that one. Yeah. Yeah. E, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, mm, this one. Okay. So this here. Mm. Sorry. So uh, do you need more? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. Don't don't move the okay, okay. <laughs> don't move the mouse while I'm typing. <laughs> okay, don't touch anything. Okay. okay. Backspace, right? Yeah. Okay. Now try this. Okay. Okay. All good. Okay. Uh, anybody? You okay? You okay? Yeah, I'm trying. I need to put the image into the. Yes. Okay. Good. Oh yeah, restarting. <laughs> Hopefully you can follow. Okay, anybody got any problems? Nice. Pretty. Everything okay? Lovely. Okay? Okay. Okay? Okay? You can? You okay? Okay.
Okay. So, any questions about contours or histogram? If not, we'll move on. So, next we'll introduce the NumPy library for image processing. So, again, I already talked about um, how mathematics is very useful um, in terms of image processing. And the NumPy library is basically the Python uh, library for any numerical uh, calculations you need. Right. So we'll see what sort of numerical calculations that we are doing for the next couple of uh, image processing that we have. So here we need to import the NumPy library. So typically for Python, the NumPy library, we just um, use it as NP as a short form and the matplotlib as PLT. Right. And we import our image library and you need your magical keyword for the matplotlib inline. So this basically is just for Jupyter Notebook. If you're not running on Jupyter Notebook, you don't need this. Okay. All right. So again, let's import our image as an array. So we have our shape, which is 600 pixel by 800 pixel. Three, this means that it's a RGB format. It, it has um, three channels. It doesn't just have one channel. And for most images, when we are doing processing, uh, if you want to display it, it's in UIN 8. But you don't have to. You can process it in float. UIN 16 is up to you. Right. Only when you want to display it, then you need to convert it back to UIN 8. Okay. So it's an array, so you can access any um, value of your array through your normal array access. Okay. Okay. So this here, we are opening the image as a black and white image, L, and we are converting it into a floating numerical value. So let's try this. This here, we have black and white image, so we don't have a three dimension, uh, what do you call that? We don't have the third dimension of your array. Basically, it's a 2D array. We don't need a 3D array to represent the three channels. We only have one uh, 2D array to represent each value, gray level uh, value of your pixel. It's 600 by 800 pixel and has a floating value of 32. Simple as if you want to check any array, just print it out. Okay, this is already an array, so we don't need that. Okay, so a couple of different gray level transforms that we can do. So what we are doing here is that this is the first one we are inverting an image. How do we invert an image? All the images is represented from 0 to 255. You want to invert, just flip it around, do a 255 minus your image. This here, we are just setting the gray levels. We are setting the gray levels to make sure that it uh, goes within the interval of 100 to 200. And this here, we are just squaring the values. So let's take a look what we do to the image. Okay, so this is the original image. And the second image is just an inversion. Right? Simple as. So as you look at this image, just, just remember the what uh, numerical transformation that we have just done. Right? We are inverting image just by just minusing the image from 255. Next one, we are clamping the values. So the images is a more gray color tone, softer. And this here, we are, what did we do? We squared the image. So we made it more contrast. We have a darker image. Okay. image resizing, there is the resize. This is just a very simple 
uh, function to resize your image. You can straight away do a image resize, a PIM, PI, uh, image dot resize, basically your pillow library once you have got your pillow library. So this here is just transforming your array into a, a pillow image and from a pillow image use the resize, transform it back into an array, that's it. So we, now we have a new array of 200 by 150 pixel. Histogram equalization, as we talked about histogram equalization two weeks ago. Script equalization basically it will okay, as we have seen this this histogram, this is quite one sided. It's very much uh, tilted towards one side. We don't have anything from 200 to 255, and we have a very high concentration between these values, about 175 to 200, right? It's high concentration. So what we talk about histogram is that this is a histogram, and when we equalize the histogram, that means that we are flattening out this histogram right here. So what does that do to the image? Let's have a look. So this here, this is basically we get the histogram of your image, we put it into the number of bins. We get a, a cumulative distribution, and we use a, inter a linear interpolation to flatten out the distribution, the cumulative distribution. Once you have your cumulative distribution, you can flatten it out, right? C a cumulative distribution basically goes like this. It, c it accumulates, right? So the number of pixels you have basically goes up. And once you flatten it out, we can get um, once you equalize the distribution, it becomes a normal distribution. Normalized it, and then we have our new values. And that's it. Okay, so let's try it on our image. And there you go. So as you can see, the previous image is a lot darker. Now we have a lot more white. What does that do to the plot, the histogram? That's how it looks. Any questions? Okay. So give it a try. Um, plot the original image and make, make a comparison. Let's do that together. So just uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So with the histogram side by side, you can see how the original histogram is like that. We just equalized it, we pulled it apart, make sure that it's more evenly distributed, and we get a new image. Again, you can do this for the different channels. If you have an RGB image, you can do the different channels on the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. All you need to do, you have a three-dimensional array, do the same for each dimension of your array, your, your, the three different dimension, your red channel, the blue channel. Okay, so let's see. But obviously, if you do that, the results are not exactly the same as you have for your grade level. Okay? All right. So if you no questions, we can take a look at your SciPy library. So for SciPy library, it's the library for all your um, scientific calculations. So if you need a, uh, whatever you do on a scientific calculator that you don't get on your normal calculator, you'll find it in your SciPy library. Okay, for a SciPy library, we can do more with your image. So in your SciPy library, there's this thing called the ND image, the N-dimensional image, and we can import the filters from that library. Okay, inside that filter, there's all sorts of things. So if you, let's take a look. Right. There's all sorts of things. That's your, your Gaussian filter, maximum filter, 
uniform filter, you can play with it. Okay, the Gaussian filter is one of the more famous uh, filters that we use for blurring an image. It uses the image um, standard deviation to perform blurring. So this here, we input five standard deviation, means that this is the amount of blurring that we want to achieve. The higher it is, the more blur your image should be. And once you have gone through a Gaussian filter, we have our new image. All right. So this year, again, this is on a gray level channel. So if you want to do it on a RGB image, this year we are going through the red, green, and blue channel. And we're doing that. We have our new colored image. Image intensity we talked about during uh, when we do the histogram that shows a different image intensity, and from there we have gradients. We can calculate gradients, and we have we, once we calculate our gradient magnitude and gradient angle, we can perform a different filter. So this year we calculate the derivatives for the different images uh, for the x and the y. So we are calculating from the x, basically on the rows and the columns of each of your image. So once you calculate the filters from your rows and your columns, and you calculate the magnitude from these two, you get your gradient magnitude. So your gradient magnitude is basically for each row, how big is your magnitude? And then from each pixel, how different your pixel is from the magnitude? What is the, the angle of magnitude that you get? Okay, next one, a bit more fun, counting of objects. So for any image that, uh, for uh, image, let's see. So this is the image that we are going to look at. Right. We want to count the number of objects in this image. So for any image, you can basically create a trash holding. We talked about trash holding two days ago, right? Once you do a trash holding, you have black, you have white, you have nothing in between. Okay, once you have done a binary thresholding. So once that's done, you can count the number of white objects surrounded by black or black objects surrounded by white, right? So this year we import the measurements and the morphology uh, sub packages from the ND image again. We need to work on a gray level image. It doesn't work on a color image. This one we can't do it on color image. So we need to convert it into a gray level image. And here, just by doing a simple trash holding, once we do a trash holding and we divide your image into black and white, we use the measurements label and we can count the number of objects. Okay. Very simple. Next, let's count the individual zero and ones. So a tip on how to do that, this is a diff slightly different gray level, right? So instead of 150, you need to change this value. So let's try that. Who can finish this first? I'll give you another sticker. <laughs>
You don't have a laptop? Uh, yeah, my Wi-Fi doesn't work. <laughs> Even with the new one? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> it's fine because I'm a beginner, so okay. I'm just getting us sure? here. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> You okay? Could you get it? It's okay. I mean, if you've done it so far, count the individual zero and ones. Include the zero and ones. Do the same thing. You just need to change the value. Change the threshold value. Okay? Okay, what's the new value? How many zero and ones included on top of the, the other objects in the image? Come on. Who got the new value? Shout it out. One seven three zero. No. <laughs> Just need to change this value. What? What? How many number of objects did you get? I mean, what number you want to change? Count the number of zero and ones you have included. Uh, include the number of zero and ones in this image on top of the other objects. Anybody want to give a guess? Beautiful. You get 188. Okay. So basically, this thresholding, image thresholding, is just converting every single value of your array, of your image array into either one or zero. And from there, the measurements.label, it will basically label from here. I can't, we can't see the whole thing. Um, but basically, you will see the surrounding images. It will go, there's a way they calculate, there's different ways to calculate, and basically they go down the rows. Um, sorry, they go, go, go through the rows one by one. And basically, once they hit, a difference of value, they hit a difference of value, they go and they will label that byte with a number. So this here it, it will label as zero and then it will go down here be one, two, three, four until it hits 188. Like so. Correct. So, you are absolutely right. It could be my mistake. Um, if anybody would like to basically count the number of objects there are, it basically, you need to look at what's the difference, what is the threshold to get between this color and this color. You got me? So, you can print out the, the array and get the value of this byte and the value of this byte you need to set your threshold between these two values right. so just now if we put we set it to 150 that means both these bytes both this gray number is, is it falls on one side of the threshold right. it falls on this side of the threshold so we need to push the threshold value lower so that there is a difference. So that if this is 1, this is 0, this is also 0. I mean, 
So previously, if the threshold is 150, that means this is, if this is 0, this is 1, or this is 1, this whole thing is 1. So you push the threshold lower, this is 0, the darker grey is 1, but the lighter grey is 0. Okay? Okay. And that's it for our session today. You can play with it, try with your own images, transpose it, you know, flip it around, rotate it, create your own histogram, your own contours, give it a try. Alright, thank you.